Right, welcome back to another little video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a material node that I've only recently discovered myself, and that's the eye adaptation node. So, <coughs> what do we mean when we talk about eye adaptation? Well, as you can see in this little preview scene, I've got one very bright room and one very dark room. If I go in here, I can still see everything that's happening, I can make out the corners. If I move into the dark room, however, over time, it's going to make things brighter for us. So this is a thing the human eye obviously does naturally when you go outside. Yeah, pupil constricts, um, or the iris constricts, one of the two. Um, and it changes how much light gets into your eye, and changes how much you can see. Um, obviously with video games, we need to have the same sort of process so we can have bright interiors, bright exteriors, dark interiors, all those different dynamic levels, um, and then have the player be able to still see what's going on. Um, in scene, let's do post process as well. Uh, there's a post process volume, so the way it can be controlled is here. Um, this has just been set to now it has uh, unbound, so it's be affecting everywhere in the world. Um, and here in exposure, there are settings for min and max brightness. So this is how much brighter and how darker it's going to go. If I set those to be one and one. Now, there's no eye adaptation happening, and there's no changing happening. So, it depends really on what your game is and what your uh, conditions of everything are. Personally, I tend to do fixed scenes, so I do portfolio work um, that's working on a, a an individual shot. Um, I don't want to use the eye, expect, uh, the eye adaptation, um, I'm just going to like the scene as is and I'll turn all that off, but obviously a dynamic game um, you kind of need that to, to cope between the different lighting settings. So so what can we do with this in the material? Well, if I just turn these two planes on and open this, there is a node for eye adaptation and that's giving you the value that the engine's applying and I'm just using the, the debug here to, to show that um, show that scalar value on these planes. So if I go into my bright room, that's at point 0.5, this is uh, the default or the, the highest it's going to go. If I go across to my dark room, you can see these values getting much bigger as the room's getting brighter. Um, it takes a little while for things to kick in. There is a speed, speed up and speed down, so you can change these values as well. If I make this much faster, I'm just going to jump back between these two. Maybe that's going up faster now. I'll just leave it the defaults. So, um, that's cool. So we can use that as a value in our material. So if I just turn on these spheres as well. So I've got a couple of materials here. This one is eye adaptation in the emissive. So I'm taking that eye adaptation value. So this is an unlit material. So this is something like something all glowing, like a light, maybe a fire, something like that that is its own light source. We don't want that to receive lighting information. We want it to kind of act like a glow. So we're doing an unlit emissive colour here. Um, and if I just open the other one, so this one, I've just taken that red colour, multiplied by an intensity, plugged it into my emissive colour. And in this one, we noticed from the, the debug, um, the eye adaptation value is getting big, means that it's kind of like brightening the scene. So if our thing's already bright, we want to divide by that. If that makes sense. Um, and we can see, if I go to my bright room, Make sure I'm getting some eye adaptation happening. Um, as the sort of eye adaptation is kicking in and giving us a, a brighter room, it's changing the the emissive. So this is the one that isn't using the eye adaptation, the eye adaptation off, and this one. So this colour is staying consistent. So with our our fire or our lights or whatever, <coughs> um, the material is compensating for the eye adaptation. So we're always getting that nice pure red. Here we're starting to get a little bit of an off colour. Um, because the adaptation is changing that, so it does depend on what your on your material and what your kind of effect is here. It's going to stay pretty similar. 0.5 is not that big of a change between these two, um, but yeah, but this is really useful. So um, if you're dealing with any kind of day or night cycle, any kind of uh, objects that are going to be used in multiple conditions, big lighting can different. Uh, big varies variations in your lighting conditions so like I say day and night huge one um, fire that's outside fire that's inside um, if you let the eye adaptation affect the material your unlit material you're going to get some some color variation um, which you may or may not want or very simply you can just divide by that eye adaptation value and then all your um, emissive unlit values will stay 
emissive and unlit as you need them to be. Um, very cool. Wish I'd known about it with some of the projects that I've worked on in the past, but now I do. So hopefully now you do too. Um, cool. That's it for today. As always, questions, comments, emails, let me know below. Um, and I will see you all next time.